I know who took it. But we're going to have to get to the entire story before I tell you why the what's it was empty, okay? So today, we're going to learn a story, and I have a big bag of stuff in here. And our first thing, we're going to learn a story from the Bible. Our story comes from the Bible today. Do you guys know that everything in the Bible is true? All, the, all words in the Bible are true. And guess what? It tells us the big God story. Can you say that with me? Big God story. That's right. And so we're going to learn the big God story because God, he's so big. And guess what? His story, it's big. And you guys, he invites you to be a part of his story. Now, our story starts a long time ago, back in a garden, a beautiful garden, something like this one. There was a garden, and there were two people that God put in the garden. Their names were Adam and Eve, right? There's a picture of them on the screen right here. So Adam and Eve were the first humans, and God had a great, loving relationship with them. He loved them so much, they walked and they talked, and it was great. But God set a rule out, and he said, you can't eat from the tree. But they ate that apple, and they disobeyed God. And as soon as they disobeyed, they sinned. And that relationship that they had was broken. Oh my goodness, it was broken, and God was so sad, and he was hurt. But guess what? He said, I love you so much that I am going to send a Messiah, a Savior, Jesus, to the world to save everyone. But you guys are going to have to wait. I promise that I'll do it. But wait patiently for me to do it. So the people began to wait. Adam and Eve, they had kids, and those kids had kids, and there were a lot of people on the earth, but they decided they didn't want to wait anymore. They were bored, they were upset, they are like, where's Jesus? And so sin, and people kept disobeying and doing things that God didn't want them to do. And so God got upset, and he said, I am going to send a lot of water to cover the entire earth. We call it a flood. But I'm going to pick one person. Noah, right here. Noah is going to be the person who builds an ark, puts the animals inside, and he's going to start the world over. After the flood, God told Noah, he gave him a promise. It's called a covenant. That's a big word, I just want you to hear it. It's a promise, okay? God said a promise, and guess what? Have you guys ever seen a rainbow before? Rainbows in the air. It's kind of a rainbow. God puts rainbows in the sky to remind us of the promise that he told us. He said, Noah, I promise to never flood the whole earth again. I will never destroy the earth. Every time you see the rainbow, remember my promise. Well, the big God story kept going. It kept going, and there was a guy named Abraham. Mr. Benedict, can you come up and help me? Can you come up and help me? Yeah? I want you to be Abraham. All right? This is your staff. Hold your staff proudly. And now I have a costume for you. Okay? We're going to make you Abraham this morning. So, here we go. We're going to put this on you. You don't really want to be Abraham? Does someone want to be Abraham? Right here. Come on up. What's your name? Kaysen. And my name is Kaysen. Right. Awesome, Crispin. Here, I'm going to put this right on you. Oh, it's getting caught. Can you put your hands in there? There we go. I am not a pro at this. All right. <laughs> Whoa, all right. Mr. Abraham, there's your staff. Here's your headband. We're going to put this on your head. All right. This is going to go like that. You are a good looking guy. Oh, and one more thing. Oh, got to tie you up here. All right. Oh my goodness, you are looking good. You are looking good. All right, Mr. Abraham, can you come stand? Oh, right here for me. Yeah? All right. You can stand there for the rest of the story. Way to go! God also gave Abraham a promise. He said, Abraham, I'm going to let your family grow so, so big that one day it's going to be a whole nation of people. 
So many people. But Abraham said, I'm old and I don't have a kid. He said, just wait, I will send you a son. And someday your kids will number more than their stars in the sky. That's crazy. But Abraham and his wife Sarah, they waited. They waited and waited and finally, oh, Abraham. That's Noah's job. Abraham, you, you got to stay in your scene. You're not Noah. All right? Why don't you just sit right here for me, okay? Perfect. But Abraham and Sarah, they waited and they had a son. And their son's name was Isaac. And then Isaac grew up and he had a son. And his son's name was Jacob. And Jacob grew up and he had 12 sons. And one of those sons was named Joseph. And Joseph is on the screen for us. Can anybody remember the story of Joseph? What happened to Joseph? What did his brothers do? What did his brothers do? They sold him to Egypt. And they took his coat off. And they took his coat off. That's right. It was a beautiful coat. Well, you know this story really well. That is awesome. Come on, All right. And so... They said, Joseph, you're going to go to Egypt. And while that was scary and that was sad, you know, Joseph, there was a plan. Joseph grew up and there was, a, there was no food in all the land. And Joseph's brothers were hungry and they didn't have any food, but they heard that there was someone in Egypt who had food. And so they went a long ways away, went to Egypt and said, Joseph, can we have some food? And Joseph brought the entire family to Egypt. And guess what? Remember the promise to Abraham that the kids would grow up and there'd be so, so, so many children? Well, that was happening. But then those children, they became slaves in Egypt. They became slaves in Egypt and there was another guy. They cried out to God and said, God, please free us because you know what? We're still waiting for the promise. And so they sent a guy named Moses to Egypt to free the Israelites. Pretty cool. You guys know the story of Moses? Well, Moses led the people of Egypt out. Or he led the people, the Israelites, out of Egypt, and they got to a big, huge river. Can you see that? That's the Red Sea. And God did a miracle, and He freed the Israelites, and they were able to walk through the river on dry ground. And then after that, God continued to speak. God continued to talk to them. God continued to grow the nation of Israel. And He said, "Israelites, I want to be your king." But the Israelites said, "We don't want you to be our king, God. We want a human king, a real king." And God said, "Okay, but it's not going to go that good for you." And so, you know what? I need a king. Will you be my king? Oh, come on up. All right. So for you, I've got this beautiful purple robe. All right. Let's throw that on you. There's your arms. Here's your crown. There's your scepter. Oh, my goodness. It's a little big, huh? It's the thing the king rules with. All right? And can you come sit right here? Perfect. Whoa. Look at that. All right. That's awesome. And so, there were good kings and there were bad kings. There were kings that obeyed God and kings that did not obey God. And sometimes... The bad kings, they did some really bad things, and the Israelites had to leave their home. They were captured, and they went a long ways away, and they were in captivity. But God brought them back. He brought them back because he loves them, and he promised to bring them a savior. But then something happened, guys. After all this time of God talking, of God giving plans, of God telling the Israelites just what to do, there was silence. God stopped. He no longer talked to kings. He no longer talked to judges. He no longer talked to prophets. He was silent. Just like this picture. The next picture. He was silent and all the people could do was think and remember what God had told them in the past. They just prayed and they hoped that someday God would send Jesus. Then after 400 years, God decided he would speak again. And he came to a man named Zachariah. And this is going to be my last helper for the day. Can I get one more boy helper? You know what? We'll do a girl, Zachariah. Come on up here. All right. You're going to stand right here, okay? All right. So, Miss Zachariah, 
I'm going to give you this shawl. Zechariah, he was a religious leader. He read the Bible to all the people. There you go. Perfect. There's no arms. Really? Look at that. All right? And then I'm going to give you your headband, because you got to wear the headband. All right? Just like that. And then I'm going to tie you up. Put your arms up. Perfect. Almost. Looking good. All right. Perfect. Can you sit right here for me? All right. So Zechariah was in the temple, and God sent an angel, an angel of the Lord, to speak to him. And this angel said, Zechariah, Jesus is almost here. I'm about ready to send Jesus to you guys. I'm going to give you a son. Your son's going to be named John, and he's going to tell all the people about Jesus. And then the angel spoke to Mary and said, Mary, it's time for Jesus to come. I'm going to give you the Messiah to give birth to. And so Mary said, okay, I'm going to believe. And then when Jesus was born, the angels spread out across the entire sky, and they told the shepherds, they told the shepherds with the sheep, that Jesus had been born. But guys, Jesus was a baby. But Jesus was the king. He was the Messiah. He was the one that from all the way back here, God had promised to send. Jesus grew up. He was perfect. He, t he taught everybody how to love God, how to live a perfect life. He did miracles. He healed people. He gave people sight. But guys, there were other religious leaders, boys and girls, that were not Happy. They were scared of what Jesus was doing because people were beginning to follow Jesus and not follow them. And they were sitting. We don't need the sheep right now. Fast them. Alright? And so, what happened to Jesus at the end of his life? What happened? Why do we have the cross here? That's right. Jesus was put on the cross and he died. And his disciples, they took him off the cross and they laid him in a tomb. And they were sad because Jesus had died. But guess what? The story doesn't end there. What happens three days later? Guys, they ran in the morning of Easter all the way to the tomb because they're like, you know what? we got to go check and make sure he's still there. But the stone, it was rolled away. The stone was rolled away and there was nobody in it. And there was an angel, and the angel said to the disciples, Why are you looking for Jesus? He told you that he would rise again from the dead. And guys, Jesus was no longer dead. Have you guys known it's not possible to come back to life? Once you're dead, you're no longer allowed to walk on the earth. But Jesus, he came back to life. And guess what? That wasn't all. He taught them more about the Bible, and then he said, You know what? I'm going to go prepare a place for you. And so the last thing he ever said to his disciples, we, we, we hear in Matthew, right before he went up into heaven, and he said, go into all the world, tell the, tell the world about me. He said, love me, accept me, tell others about him. And then, guys, he rose in a cloud into heaven. Remember, remember this king right here? Remember. God wants to be our king. Well, Jesus, he's living in heaven, and he's reigning as our king. It's just a cloud, guys. It's not a smoke. Wow. And so God, Jesus, he lives now in heaven. Remember why our, what was in our what's it? What was in our what's it? Was anything in our what's it? Nothing. Nothing was in our what's it. That's because, guys, Jesus is not dead. Jesus is alive. Can you say that with me? Jesus is alive. And he loves you very much. And he wants you to be a part of his story.